So where are we in Australia with native title and our rights as Indigenous peoples to our territories and resources? Clearly, change must occur. This is already incumbent upon government, as we can see under their international obligations. The real crunch for the government is that they expected to reach a satisfactory outcome in partnership with us as the Indigenous peoples. So in the next steps for Mabo, I'll point out very quickly, it's 17 years since the High Court released its ruling on Mabo case. It's 10 years since the third committee found that Australia's laws are discriminatory. It's four years since the UN adopted a program of action um, for the second decade of the world's Indigenous peoples, calling upon governments to review the national laws to ensure the rights of Indigenous peoples are protected. It's two years since the UN adopted a declaration on the rights of Indigenous peoples. It's two months since the Durban Review Conference um, called upon all states to take necessary measures to implement the rights of Indigenous peoples in accordance with the international human rights instruments without discrimination. And it's two months since the Government of Australia announced its support for the Declaration on Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Now in Australia, it's time for us to take the next step arising from Mabo. It's time to evaluate the outcomes from the Mabo decision of the High Court and to analyse fundamental principles to ensure that we have eliminated racism entirely from the national land rights system. Finally, let me set out some ideas for your consideration. I stress that these ideas may seem fanciful, but are not so inconceivable if a serious attempt is to be made to address the shortcomings of the current system and implement the rights of Indigenous peoples in accordance with the standards that have now been internationally recognised. One, the government should be prepared to enter into an agreement or a constructive arrangement, which I shall call a treaty, and under this treaty, um, the issue of the outstanding issue of our sovereignty as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, or even our rights of self-determination, should be addressed to our satisfaction and to the satisfaction of the Australian government. This agreement can focus upon the fundamental and essential rights that we hold as Indigenous peoples. The Declaration provides a platform for those rights. Second, an agreement should establish just and fair procedures for adjudicating disputes. And I uh, very quickly point here that we might look at the Waitangi Tribunal model in New Zealand, uh, even though in New Zealand the final authority still rests with the Minister for the Crown. Um, in, and thirdly, in relation to ownership of our territories, um, that is the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander territories, they should come under one common national title. At the moment, there are all different titles. And it should be in a form of land title agreed between the Australian government and us as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, and disputes within those territories about who have rights as traditional owners or custodial responsibilities can be resolved by Indigenous peoples through Indigenous institutions, instead of it being a process which is denying us our title uh, in the federal courts. Uh, finally, in all states and territories of Australia, there should be set a minimum area of territory to, uh, to be identified as Aboriginal territory or Torres Strait Islander territory, but ensuring that that minimum is uniformly available across all the local areas. The minimum amount would be negotiated. Statistics show that Aboriginal people in West Australia, Northern Territory and South Australia have ownership or control over 25% of the land banks. It's an impressive figure. However, it's not the whole story. However, in the four eastern states, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who make up 66% of the total Indigenous population only have control of 3% of the land. In New South Wales, Australian Capital Territory, Victoria and Tasmania, it is only 0.4% of the land. So the goal of the government should be outcomes achieved in transferring ownership of land back to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Um, I'll, I'll finish there. I have a much longer presentation. Um, but I'm, I'm told that the presentation will be available uh, to, to you on the IATSIS uh, website and elsewhere. But I'd, I'd like to once again finish up by paying my respects uh, to uh, Koiki Mabo. And uh, I wonder how crazy all of this sounds. Was it as crazy as it sounded in the early 1980s as he took his cases to the court? Um, and I show my respects to him as best as I can with the message that I carry. It's time for the Australian Government to enter into negotiations with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to reach agreement on land rights and the rights of Indigenous peoples. I also, once again, thank the organisers for giving the opportunity to talk about our rights as Indigenous peoples. Thank you very much.